بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو پروگریسو ویب اپلیکیشن ٹوٹوریلس دس از علی رضا اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹیل یو اباؤٹ کیش ورجننگ اینڈ ڈائنامک کیش اوکے سو لیٹ اسٹار اینڈ ہیو اے لک واٹ وی ہیو ٹوڈے فرسٹ آف آل آئی وڈ لائک ٹو انٹروڈیوس یو سم آف دا پیجز دیٹ آئی ہیو جسٹ کریٹیڈ دیٹ از دا اباؤٹ پیج اینڈ دا کانٹیکٹ پیج اینڈ آئی ہیو گیون دا لنکس ٹو دی رسپیکٹو مینیو آئٹمس سو یو سی ایئر اباؤٹ اس اینڈ دا دا کانٹیکٹ اس اینڈ دا ہوم از آلریڈی دیئر وی ہیو So I have linked my side menu as well and my normal menu and I have copied and pasted the same inside the contact and the uh, about .html. I hope it is clear to everyone. So now let's go and and I have given some headings. So you see uh, I have specified any uh, heading and here inside about we have the about page and here inside contact we have the contact page. So let's go and check it out uh, what's the result. So Uh, open with live server so you see we have this hello coming already but you see here the problem that I'm going to demonstrate here is I have only h1 in this page that is my home.html and I have opened home.html but you see the h1 is not there that is why uh, the reason behind this is the service worker Uh, we have updated we have we have cached our items inside the cache that we have created let me show you that so when we go to the application and you see our service worker is already there and let's go to the cache and click on this and you see your home.html that was the page that i have already cached inside my cache in the previous lectures so that is why the cache is not updated and when you have changed something but the cache has the previous home.html for that purpose what we have to do we have to do specify the versions of the cache every time when we update okay our page for that purpose what we have to do we have to go and inside the service worker and here you see i have given the name to my um, cache that is my cache okay and that was there inside the browser that is this one but this time because i have changed something So I'm going to update my name from my cache to my cache2 and save this. Now the problem is, uh, let me show you that. Uh, when I have changed this, you see, when I go to the service worker, it is waiting for me to update the service worker. So let's click on the skip waiting. And now uh, let's try to refresh this page. But still you see that H1 is not uh, visible. The reason behind that is, You see, we have now my cache also and my cache too also. So what will happen when the request is, uh, the fetch event is uh, activated, what will happen? It will check all the caches, not the single cache. So if it found the cache object first, that is in this case, we have my cache, then what will happen? It will pick up that uh, page from the first cache and it will uh, it will not go uh, beyond that because it uh, the first occurrence will be picked up and it will be returned so that is the problem so what we have to do we have to remove the old cache and put the new cache inside our cache storage for that purpose let's try to add some code so where we should write the code and this is the place where we should write the code because when the service worker gets activated we should delete the previous Uh, or the old caches so let's try to remove this or comment it out and now come here and use this evt callback uh, parameter and now here inside this we have to write uh, wait until that is the method that we have used before as well and come inside so that because that's asynchronous these all are the asynchronous task so uh, the activation even should wait uh, till the thing that i'm going to specify here okay now the first thing is I want it uh, when the activate event uh, executed or fired I have to specify the keys so I wanted to fetch all the keys so caches dot keys okay this is the method that we can utilize and we can also uh, uh, write uh, something like caches dot keys and then it's a it's a promise then we have to specify the then event so the then function and then inside then we can use that keys that we have returned that is that returned to us and then here inside this let's write here console so that we can display whether we are getting the keys or not so console.log 
and simply write here keys okay now let's check what's the output when the service worker gets activated so okay so here you see my service worker is uh, changed and let's click on the skip waiting okay and now go to the console so you, you see here my cache and my cache 2 so that is what I have done here inside the activated event when, when my service worker gets activated then uh, all the keys that I got here uh, are displayed on the console now uh, what's the next step the next step is to uh, remove this I don't want to display instead I wanted to uh, remove the older caches for that purpose let us return and what I wanted to return I wanted to return a code that is promise dot all because I wanted to perform multiple operations and those operations are returning multiple results so that's why I'm using this method promise dot all what this method will do this method will get all the promises together and only uh, and, and uh, join them together and give you one single promise or one single return result so instead of getting all the return results separately I'm going to put all the return results inside the promise dot all function so let me write the code now so inside this let's pick up the keys that we get okay and then let's apply a filter inside this key and this filter gives us whatever the key is that's the parameter and here I'm going to specify that that please pick up the key that is not equals to equals to the name that I have specified here inside my cache let me show you that uh, this this one so whatever the name I have passed I have to put it here and what the best way of doing this is to put inside a variable so let's create a variable const and cache name and equals to semicolon and give you your, your cache name so this is the name okay and instead of this let's write here cache name the variable name that's it and similarly copy and instead of this hard coded value let's pass because when we change one time it will get uh, the impact everywhere so what's this what's happening here guys basically the keys that were returned I picked up every key I have to iterate through all the keys just like a loop okay so promise dot all is giving uh, the same uh, methodology to me so keys dot filter goes to and here I'll pick up the single key and check whether the key is not equals to the name that we have here if it is not in the name then map it dot map and then round brackets and then right here key goes to and then right here caches dot delete and round bracket so what will happen whatever the key we get it simply deletes so basically an array is returned when the name is not equal to the cache name that we have here all those names that were the previous caches so will be filtered and picked up inside an array and then passed that uh, array step by step one by one every cache will be removed uh, with the help of this promise so this is also a promise this is also a promise so basically multiple promises are there or multiple uh, chains are there so that's why I have used the promise dot all function okay so uh, now only single thing is returned I hope it is clear to everyone now it now, now it is time to check whether it is working or not so let's go back and go to the application and update the service worker by clicking on the skip waiting and now you see uh, it's saying that there is an um, error in the delete function All right so the problem is with this so let me write here uh, the key that I wanted to delete okay that was the parameter that was missing now save this and come here and now um, let's try to go on the console and you see there are no errors now and when you go to the uh, cache store you see automatically the previous cache was removed and we'll get the updated uh, work that we have done okay now let's try to add another one so go to the home 
and after h1 let's specify um, hr and save so a new horizontal line i have added and go to the service worker and change this cache from cache 2 to cache 3 now this time let's check what will be the output so you see here uh, we have two things that when the service worker gets updated automatically the cache 2 was removed because it will pick up with the help of this code what is happening it will get all the keys okay uh, all the caches that is not with this name that means my all previous caches will come and put inside an array and then individually one by one keys uh, the array basically is accessed and then that uh, key will be deleted from the array and that's it and it will be returned okay i hope it is clear to everyone so this is how we can pick the pick up the keys all the keys from the cache and then access individual keys with the help of the filter and the map method i hope it is clear to everyone so that's what versioning is uh, the cache versioning but the problem is let's say when we are here and the user tries to navigate to the contact okay so you see we are in the uh, proper mode uh, but it is uh, the about page is also working the contact page is also working but in the cache we don't have these things because we have only hard coded those things that are uh, the initial things or the basic things that we require every time but what if uh, there are 200 pages of a website then we can uh, we should store all those 200 pages inside the cache and that becomes the use uh, wastage of the resources or and the memory too so for that purpose what we have to do we, let's say if the user goes on the contact then only the contact should be uh, cached and when the user goes to the about then only the about page should be cached and so on so that's what the dynamic uh, caching is for that purpose what we have to do we have to go here and let's create another constant so constant let me write here const and uh, dynamic cache so that's the name and equals to dynamic cache okay any name you can provide so that's another va variable but uh, the problem is this time i'm not going to hard code these values because i don't know what the where the user will go and how it how the uh, pages will be cached for that purpose uh, what i have to do i have to specify something else so where i have to do that i have to do that here so when somebody tries to request a thing that is not available inside the cache then this fetch event will, will be uh, handled okay so from this point we have to append our code all right so here i have to specify a promise again that is then and then come inside and here i have to specify what i have got so when this fetch event executes it gives me a response so i'll get that response inside a variable let's say cache response okay or let's create a name with res that goes to a function that a callback function and then come inside so whatever the response i'll receive what i have to do i have to simply uh, return the caches return and then caches dot open because I wanted to put my the requested resource inside my cache that is the dynamic cache so let's write here dynamic cache dyne cache that's my variable name okay so please open this cache and then uh, what we have to specify another promise that is then when the cache is open then what we have to do we have to come inside then and then specify a parameter and a callback function and then come inside okay so please open when we get the request response okay that response will be stored inside res and then we'll open the cache that we have here and then inside that cache we have uh, when we when we get our dynamic cache so we put a parameter that is cache here and then inside this what i'll do i'll simply write here cache that is our parameter dot put and then round bracket open now you see what we have to put here so we have to put here evt that is an event dot request okay uh, dot url so what will happen when this cache will open 
whatever the event was its requested url uh, the thing that i have told you in the previous class the request okay so that url will be term used to utilize as a key and the value of that uh, is uh, the fetch response so for that purpose we have res okay so the original response is res so we'll get the copy of this response here with the help of the clone function and then uh, after this let's put semicolon and then uh, return because we have to return uh, ultimately something so that's our, our res basically the result response is coming inside the res of this fetch event let me sh let me uh, explain this code again we were at that point uh, before okay if the cached object was not there if the requested object was not in the cache then this fetch event executes the response of this fetch event executes will get inside res and inside when when we get this res as a response then we'll open the cache that is the dynamic cache we have returned uh, uh, via opening the cache and then when the cache is opened what we have to do we have to put inside the cache with the help of this parameter what we have to put the url that was requested okay let's say i have uh, requested for the about.html then that was the url and what's basically inside the response it should be stored inside this and the original response should be returned to this and this will be returned to this and this will be returned to the uh, uh, overall fetch event i hope it is clear to everyone so this is how we can dynamically uh, store the pages that we have inside the second cache that we have created so now let, it's time to check this out okay so uh, let's click on the service workers and we have to update the service worker you see uh, right now i don't have any dynamic cache so let's click here okay now my service worker is updated now what will happen uh, the things that are not available in the cache let me go to the home page you see we have this now and now dynamic cache is also created and when i click on the contact okay and when i click on the about so you see when i click on the dynamic cache my contact and my about pages are stored inside the dynamic cache okay so wherever i go only those resources will store inside this dynamic cache and my static cache was my previous cache that we have in, done in the previous lectures so i hope it is clear to everyone why we have created dynamic cache where the user wants to go only those pages or only those resources will be cached and no other resources will be cached i hope it is clear to everyone so let me show you the code once again what i have done guys here in, in the fetch event if the object was not present inside the cache then what will happen the request executes again and when the response of the res request is received inside res that's the parameter and it has a callback function that is returning the cache that we have created that is dynamic cache the open function creates the dynamic cache or the cache inside the cache storage in the browser or uh, if it does not exist and if it exists then simply it uh, adds the records or the resources so when the cache is open then uh, created a variable parameter you can say and a callback function with the help of this inside the dynamic cache i'm going to put the key and the value okay so the key is the url basically and the value is the res response that we received from the uh, server and then the, we have returned the response as well so you see here uh, we have the name uh, and the path basically of the things that we have requested and the response i hope it is clear to everyone guys so uh, dynamic cache is cleared up till now i hope and we have done the static cache also so uh, i think that's all for today do track do try uh, these things but one thing that i must tell you here let's say if i wanted to go on the service okay so service.html let's write inside home and write here service dot html and save we are inside home all right and now come here and also update the service worker okay no 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 need to update service worker let's go to the application service workers stop unregister okay now let's try to go inside the home okay now we have the service worker uh, but it's, it's stopped the thing that i wanted to show you is that when i click uh, on the offline now we have offline okay when i click on the service worker you see uh, it is not available okay and uh, when we go to the caches 
so you see we don't have any uh, service dot html and here inside you see but it is cached but this is that resource is not available so uh, that's what the benefit of caching we have okay uh, so we show the fallback page or page also inside the uh, application also in the next class so that's all for today thank you so much take care allah hafiz